film based on the game, which I've not played, but Dan and Ryan use have based yes. on the series. The series, series of games, of games. yeah, it's very vastly yeah, popular games. Yeah, yeah. you've yeah. both played them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've 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 played the first four, I think, fully. Right. Yeah, like up to the pirate one, and then after that, I kind of just gave up. I just don't. I don't do video games. I do. Yeah. Fi- I do FIFA. Uh, that's kind of all I do. And I'm rubbish at that. You do card well, so. as well. You've got your tactics. Yeah. My, my card f- tactic is the best. Wait, one. Number two was fun. Number two was great. Yeah. Oh yeah, Joe, you've, you've played them but not seen the film. Yeah. No. Yeah, I was the boss I'm of okay. Brotherhood Online. <laughs> you, you, I imagine you saw the reviews. I just video game films in general. To be honest. Yep. There is a bit of a stigma. There is a bit of a thing that normally means that video game films don't work out. Mm. And, and people thought that this would be the one. Ryan, what's it about? Well, Assassin's Creed is based on this popular series of games. It's not based on a storyline mm-hmm. from the series of games. It's a it's a brand new storyline. It's um, basically Michael Fassbender is a guy called Callum Lynch. He's been put to death. When he gets the lethal injection, he wakes up and he's in a facility run by Marion Cotillard. She has put um, she is the head of a foundation called the Abstergo Foundation with her father Jeremy Irons. And what that in the Air Foundation there is a machine called the Animus, and what this does is allows people to access the genetic memories of their ancestors. Stay with me, <laughs> and uh, it allows them to go back into different periods of time and sort of relive like like as as if it was a real experience the ancestors' memories. So Callum Lynch goes back in time to his ancestor called Aguilar in 15th century Spain, who is part of the mythical order of assassins, and they are fighting against the Templars, who are the rulers of Spain, and they want to find this magical MacGuffin called the Apple of Eden which if they find it has the code to the power of free will and will essentially let them rule the world if you're confused yeah, yeah you will be yeah, more you will confused be. when yeah. you see the film yeah. yeah there's a line where Michael Fassbender and I can't say I'll, I'll paraphrase what he says he yeah. says what the hell is going on but and you can at, guess what and at that point yeah. I turned to Ryan and said what is going on <laughs> I yeah. don't know what is going mm-hmm. on see if you've played the games you have some kind of yeah, idea you've got what's some going kind of, on yeah. um, but like yourself you would not have, it, no. have yeah. a clue um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely does ride off the back that yeah. it hopes that you've played the game. So yeah, I mean, I can I can see. I mean, it was similar with Warcraft, really, because I mean, I know you, you you said it was the film that you cared about the least. Yeah, last it's, year, wasn't it wasn't. It, like, the, it wasn't it, terrible. It, it wasn't you, the but. worst film of last year. I thought it was bad. Yeah, but I just I, I I cared about it so little, and I would put this in a similar line, but maybe even less. That's what so. it was for me for Warcraft. I felt like I was looking through a portal at something that I hadn't. It was it was like being a kid and like the play like we had to watch other kids in the playground playing, and I was just stood there like. You know, I didn't understand like a thing what was going on because like obviously just it's outside of looking in really, so you can have no real comprehension of what it is, and I can get why you felt that mm. with this. But I think as someone who did play the first few games in the series, I was pretty you know I understood what was happening, why this was happening, what was going on, and to be honest, I think it's you know for, for what it's worth, I mean there was a lot there's a lot of talent behind this film, and that's why there everyone was like you know could this break the curse? A lot of talent. You know, you got Justin Kurzel who did uh, Macbeth last year, which was a, a visually stunning film, uh, even though it was kind of impenetrable for dialogue because mm-hmm. I'm not really a Shakespeareite, if that's mm-hmm. a correct term. Shakespearean. Shakespearean, yeah, Shakespearean <laughs> follower. You know, uh, and then Fassbender and Cotillard who have basically put themselves forward as one of the new power couples of Hollywood. Yeah. Even though it's Fassbender and Vikander in real life. Yeah. They I are. wonder how she feels about that. I wonder, yeah. That, uh, I do Cotty wonder. Yard's getting up in yeah. that business. But I think I just had so much fun with this. Really? You know, I, yeah. I, I, I don't think it's a great film. I really don't. But I'm, glad, I think, I'm glad you said it. Like it, it just it, it takes the ridiculous premise that it's got that you can put a, a little implant implant thing in the back of your head and you can somehow go back centuries and relive your ancestors who somehow happen to be a massively secret order of assassins. You know, as you do. I think it just it, it go it goes for that premise with a real mm. sense of gusto and I think like. It it didn't get bogged down too much, and I think it's got a good pace about it. And I think, and I get that if you want it to be, you know, if you, if you're an outsider looking at no, it, no. it could be. Like, I okay, but, fine. Yeah. I, I disagree about getting bogged down. The entire thing is bogged down by lead weights of plot. Yes, so much exposition in this film. And in terms of, um, oh, what was it you said? What was, what was it you said before that? Uh, I get the, the the silly concept was executed with no silliness at all. The, the whole thing is incredibly straight-faced and serious to the point where you can just look at these actors going, they must realise what they're saying is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But they're not giving that impression off. They are genuinely serious about all of this stupid stuff that is going on. I get the feeling that the, the fans of the game would be pretty insulted by this. I think, it, I, I, as somebody... And let's say, I haven't played the games, so... I'm the outside audience, but the film should still make some effort to be an entertaining film and not just fan service for the fans of the game. Surely. Yeah. 
I think it's a bad film. Mm. It's a really bad film. It's ugly. We've got to talk about how ugly, or how ugly visually it is. After Justin Curzel made Macbeth last year, and let's just say that the the cinematography from Adam Arkapoor, same as Macbeth, he's copied over a lot of the stuff from that. The big smoke sequences, mm-hmm. straight from Macbeth, nothing original there. The rest of it, I mean, the fight scenes are shot like video games. Mm. It's all shot very flat. I mean, I know Ryan, you like, you like the choreography, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I, I, I think I'm, we're arriving at a crossroads here because I think, I, to be honest, I really enjoyed the visual style about it. I think there, there's a sequence early on when Aguilar and his uh, female companion escape from from capture from the Templars, and they they, they go on a, on a on a run through through the city, and it's it, it's basically ripped straight from the video games. I mean, it's like the the visual style that's going on there is really great as they jump across the these sort of the banisters and the, and jump through windows and batter people and it's just I just I, I just again it's just it's like you you're watching like, somebody play the game but a really high budget version of the game with what's, Michael Fassbender in it what what's the point and, of that though I, you, I can just watch and, like, I can, the, I can the fight's worse so well choreographed it's satisfying I know it's a 12 year but I did feel satisfied by the level of violence in I it could because, watch I could watch PewDiePie right. do a playthrough of Assassin's Creed yeah, I wouldn't have sure, to pay yeah. 10 pound to go see that and I, 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 I know that the story is ridiculous and I know that it does get bogged down yeah at but times, they but don't I, think, <laughs> I don't know, I, just, I think the I think the, the the thing that it has the stuff that I had to see it was quite like it was quite interesting for me. I think that like some what? of the, the some of the stuff that ties in with the visual style, like um, the moments when they go and see um, Callum's dad, who's played by Blaine Gleeson in the film, and mm. like it's this just sort of this they go into this um, this room and it's just a sort of it's a sort of this really quiet, calm area where all all the people who have been affected by the animus and sort of the um, they, see, I, even I'm having trouble. <laughs> 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 like, they, 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 they've been they, they, they've been affected by it because they've used it so much, and they're, they're sort of like disconnected from their minds. And it's like this really, like a really serene place where everyone's sort of disconnected from reality. And I think that was a, a really nice touch. But that's but, not explained properly. The, yeah. the problem with the film is, I mean, sometimes it's better to sh- you know to show and not tell. Yeah, it's just fair. it's so bogged down with plot and exposition. Mm, yeah. That it doesn't give you time to care about the characters. There's this whole romance going on with Aguilar and the girl who I, mm. I have no idea what her name is. You don't really care about that mm. because it's not really explained that well. You don't know their relationship. You see the bit at the beginning when he's becoming an assassin. Yeah. That's very rushed through. Um, Michael Fassbender does a good job because he's a really good actor. And yeah. You, you can tell that. Like, even though this, I would say this is. I mean, it's not an awful film, but I wouldn't say it's the best film. But he still kind of comes through as a decent actor in it. Yeah, um, but it's just weird down with so much plot, and yeah. they try to rush things because they know they've got to put a certain amount of action in to please the fans. Mm. I was sold on Fastbender, but I, I, don't, I don't think Cotillard. I, I just feel like this story, especially because it's with a game, a game's not two hours, a game's like ten hours, yeah. and you play through it, and because you're playing, you feel more for the characters, and then the story can just be put through in the ten yeah. hours. But with a film, you got two hours and. If you've got a fit, like oh, I'm guessing the studio will give them tick boxes. You've got oh, to put, absolutely. you've got to put a chase scene in because the fans like a chase scene. Yeah. So that was shoe on in. Oh, you've got to put the hidden blade in because the hidden blades in the game that shoe on in. You know, I feel like I feel like this would have worked better as a TV show, like something like Westworld, Possibly, where they didn't yeah. have to rush all the story. We could have that same length of development as a game, might exactly. Give it. And yeah. then you you could have you could separate it more between like the present day and when he goes back in his ancestor but I just feel like it's so rushed especially the, the beginning's very clunky very very, very clunky because it's got so much to go through and um, and the ending's very rushed because mm-hmm. it's kind of like after without spoiling anything after they kind of discover the truth of kind of what's going on you feel like the, the the final scene with Jeremy Irons and mm. it's, it's just so rushed and very, very Charlotte yeah, Rampling and her two scenes and, the ob- just turns and up. obviously relying on a sequel Probably, probably, because you could kind I, of tell. I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how it'll perform. Yeah, but uh, uh, and I feel for the director because I just feel like it's he had an uphill battle by just mm. how big the story is. Yeah, and you got to fit it in a yeah. running time of two hours. You know, you lose them before you've even you absolutely. Know, I think filmed your first shot. I think in terms of negatives for me, I definitely think that. I mean, I, the worst part of the games are the the present day bits. Like you, when like, I thought yeah. the worst bits of the film were the Spanish yeah. Inquisition. Bits. I think I think the fact that um, it's just the fact that it cuts back. I mean, because they they actualize the animus in the in the film differently from the game. Because in the game, it's literally like a sunbed. <laughs> most of the time, you just you just sit down and it's a it's a it's a machine you sit into. But in this, it's a it's like a grabby arm thing that imitates the actions of what he's actually doing. That, in, that in was a good time. touch. And I, I quite that, like that. I heard that the games but, are actually taking that from the film and they're going to put oh, them brilliant. in the new games. That's yeah. what I've heard. But I think uh, it's just I think it, it cut between that a bit too much from my liking. But I did, I did like the style of that again. And I don't know. I, just, I think I'm just falling on the other side of the fence. 
Well, you're wrong. The, no, I'm yeah, kidding. The, <laughs> um, what, that's the New Year's resolution broke straight away. Yeah, you're wrong. And I mean, it opens. <laughs> fired. The film opens with a big bunch of text. Yeah. Yeah. What was all that about? Because the, of just how much story they got fit in. And yeah, that you were coming in just after that point. I, as well. I missed you, that. You yeah. missed, I, you I, missed I, the I, opening. Yeah, yeah. I, I came in when he was getting his enunciation of the uh, assassins. Yeah. I mean, so that opening text is obviously for people who haven't played the games. Like, yeah. oh, there you go. Now you know what's going on, but you yeah. don't. You... If I see a big wall of text at that, I switch off. Yeah. I was half expecting attention. them to hand out a copy of the game after. It's like if this, if you want to get worth crackers. Want well, lose more money? Yeah, lose Are you more sure money, about yeah. that? I, f- I feel like there's there's bits of good in the film like they did try to make it work I just feel like it was such an uphill battle with the running time and how much story that I get through and the premise like I think with video game films like sometimes with premise that works for video game mm. doesn't always translate and it, t- think, it took yeah. me about 20 minutes to realise that the plot it does not work for a film yeah too nah yeah what does this say for the future of video game films then? Because everyone thought Warcraft would be good. It wasn't. Everyone thought this would be the one. Everyone thought Justin Kurzel with Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard, this would be the one. And it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So what happens next? Where do we go from here? We is it a... is it is it at all possible to make one I good? think video game adaptions belong with TV because you have the time with TV. Yeah, I, I see mm-hmm. what you mean. And Because oh, TV... You see, look, I'm going to use Game of Thrones as an example. Mm. Um, they approached George R. R. Martin for to make to adapt them into films yeah. and he said no because the stories are too vast so mm-hmm. that's why he did, made it a TV show video games in principle of books too vast to fit in that two hour runtime. make yeah. a TV show out of it Game of Thrones like Westworld they make money like studios are kind of got to yeah. look for that mm-hmm. and then films like, leave them because the format's different you, you know two hours you've got less time to play with so I think video game TV shows are the future whether they'll that pick up on that but yeah them. I would say that's yeah, that's yeah. how you kind of adapt them because they're always oh. going to because it's licenses they're going to make money you know yeah. I would love to see like a, a Manhunt film or a Manhunt TV show because you know like a Manhunt you had like episodes where you go through each like section you yeah. could do like an well, episode a bit like an episode each there's an Uncharted yeah. film coming out soon how do you feel about that that's a strange that's, that's, they're already that's films. Indiana Jones done they're already mm. films yeah that's Indiana Jones there it know? is like it's but, just going to be but then again there was a Tomb Raider um, adaption of the video yeah. game and that yeah, with uh, Angelina Jolie yeah, I and quite that, enjoyed that them. That didn't work for me. I don't. I, 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 we've, we've got another one soon. One. We've got Alicia Vikander in yeah. Tomb Raider, yeah. which I mean, I, I don't. I don't know if any of them are safe. Oh, I thought yeah, that. I thought that would be. A, that might be a good one, but I mean, I thought this would be a good one. There's also wasn't. Rob McElhenney's Minecraft. Yeah, but I think that might yeah. be funny though. That'll be more funny than serious. And the Tetris trilogy. Well, that, that's the Lego you know, movie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, <laughs> yeah. The Minecraft movie is just a Lego movie. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, Rockstar Games and Manhunt. That's what I would. I would yeah. love to see. Man GTA Man game. Yeah. I think, I think it'll really work. GTA TV show. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption yeah. TV. Get Dwayne show. Johnson and a CJ sorted. Yeah. <laughs> San Andreas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's Assassin's Creed. Then it's in cinemas now. I am not going to recommend. Ryan. I, I feel bad. For liking this, don't, but don't, I, don't, know, don't, I, don't feel no, bad. I, no, I, I, I did. I did enjoy it. I was, I was sold on the, you know, the Lynch story, and it is stupid, but yeah, I thought what it was worth. I enjoyed it. Dan Heppel. If you play the game, pick it up on DVD. Don't go to cinema. Say it. Uh, wait for La La Land or something to come out next week. Uh, quite yeah. different films, but quite, I like quite, it. very quite different. different. But yeah, not, not much stabbing, but more dancing. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. need more dancing in 2017. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something I want to introduce this year as a new means of charting bad films. Yeah, and I've already pitched this, haven't I? A walkout ometer. At what point in the film would I have walked out? Because mm. I don't, I never walk out of films, but I, in my head I always go, I wish I could walk out now. And I think for Assassin's Creed it was about 20 minutes. Mm. If I was going to. But I, I never actually would. It's just my way of getting it on paper 20 minutes. So yeah. that, is, that is the leaderboard at the top. Assassin's 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 Fair minutes. Enough. <laughs>